In this video I want to show you how you can create bell sounds with the synthesizers in Ableton Live. So I'm going to show you how you can do it with analog, with operator, and with wavetable. And in the end I'm also going to share some little bonus tip on how to make your bell sounds a little wider and bigger. In case you're new here, let me quickly say hi. So my name is Janis and on my channel you can find many videos about making and producing music and most importantly having more fun doing it. And there's also a good amount of videos about making sounds with the synthesizers in Ableton Live, so you're already warmly invited to check out those videos after watching this video. Let's start with analog, which is the most simple version of creating bell sounds, but also the most limited one, because with the other two options you'll see we can use something called frequency modulation or FM modulation, which is really helpful for designing bell sounds. And analog doesn't have this, but it doesn't mean we can't make bell sounds. What we need is a sine wave for oscillator one, so you can pick it here. And also in the beginning we're going to change the routing to this one because we want to have also a second oscillator that is going to be sent through some additional filter and envelope. Then we're going to make some nice envelope for our sine wave and we want some long sounds because most bells have quite a long ring. You can always adjust it but I like to work with kind of longer sounds like 5 second release decay and the sustain here so it actually descends a little if you keep the note pressed. And one thing I always dislike is the kind of envelope velocity intensity here. I always put it to somewhere slightly below one. And actually now the release is very long. Let's do it like this. And just alone a sine wave already sounds like a little bell. But we need some more in the beginning because if you listen to some bell sounds there's some higher pitched sound in the beginning for some initial attack like creating some overtones. And if you can't do frequency modulation you have to use a second oscillator that is way higher than the initial sound. So maybe like two or three octaves. And you could use a sine wave. I like here to use a square wave because it gives us more options in this menu here because we can use something called sync, which kind of simulates a sound where the oscillator 2 is synced to another oscillator, it's not synced to oscillator 1, but another kind of, kind of timbre, which is good for what we try to do. And we try to crank this all the way up. And because now the sync setting pitched our second oscillator so much higher, we can bring the first one some octave higher. And also I always like to play a bit with the detune and ended up having it actually all the way up here. And then we should also make it a bit softer because otherwise this high pitched sound is really dominant. So just nicely mix this in with our initial sine wave. And then you also just adjust the envelope for your second oscillator again. I don't want it to react so much to velocity. And here you can basically do whatever feels good to you. Sometimes it's also interesting to make it really short. So you have this tiny little attack in the beginning, but I also like it just the way a little longer. Next is going to be operator and as I mentioned we will have more control here. The first thing we have to do is select another routing, which is this kind of full square. And if you're new to operator and it feels a bit intimidating, just try to follow along. These are not many steps. And also I'll link you a video later where I just explain the basic principle of all three Ableton Live synthesizers. But for now, stick to this routing, which just means that we are going to hear the yellow oscillator A and the blue oscillator C. And this B oscillator is going to modulate the sound of the A oscillator, which is why it's here above the A oscillator. And the D oscillator is going to modulate the C oscillator, but it means we're not going to hear the D or the B oscillator. And for our A oscillator, we're just going to use the sine wave as we actually do for all of them. And we just again make the envelope a bit longer again. With those envelopes it's personal, you don't have to do it exactly the way that I do it. Also I like to bring down the velocity reaction because it's very strong at 50 and we're also going to add some velocity reactions with those other oscillators here. And the most important thing is now the B oscillator because that's the one that creates the kind of timbre for our overall bell sound. And as I mentioned the B oscillator we're not going to hear, but as soon as we increase the volume it starts affecting our sound. Just see what happens. But 
that's not the sound we're going for. We just want some similar envelope to the one we just drew. So again, some longish decay release, however you play. And then we also want to increase the course because that means this sound or this oscillator is higher pitched, which usually creates a little more intensive sound. Maybe you like this already as a bell. This is a very simple bell, but I also like to play with a fine tuning because this way we can get those more nasty overtones, but also a little more charismatic. So I think I had it somewhere at around 700 something. Because now it sounds really fat and huge. And again, it's up to taste how intense you want to have this effect because the more you increase the volume, the more of this kind of modulation you get. Here it's really intense, or the more you go down, the more subtle it gets. And if you allow some velocity reaction, like it is actually on 50%, I usually like to have it a bit lower. You can also have some impact on this by the way you play. So if you play with a high velocity, you get a lot of it. If you play with a low velocity, you get less. And this would already work totally fine as a bell. But since we have one oscillator left and actually one modulator, we can just see if we can add another timbre. And I'm just going to show you with the sound I already made before this video. So here you can see it's very simple that the C oscillator just has a slower envelope, which means it has some attack in the beginning. And it's all sine waves and the D oscillator even has some longer attack. So if we mute our A oscillator, you can hear what happens. So it's kind of some supplementary sound to the A sound because here we have the attack, which is really clear. And then we use this other oscillator to just add some bottom, make the sound a bit wider or fuller. And together it actually sounds really pleasant. Without the C oscillator, it just sounds a bit thinner. By the way, if you feel like you generally need some course on just synthesis in general to understand the basic terms, the basic principles, and just to understand this whole sometimes intimidating subject in a very simple manner, I just want to invite you to check out a class that I made that is currently on Skillshare. And there's a link down below in the description. There's also a link, actually this link you see there gives you a free trial for one month. So you're warmly invited to check that out. So let's see how we can make sounds with wavetable. And here I even have two examples because first I'm going to show you the basic sound and then this kind of bonus sound you heard in the intro. It was really inspired by the Synclavier sound, which is just a little brighter. And I used a very simple technique, but yeah, I'll show you this technique after showing you the basic principle. And we're also going to use FM synthesis here. So it's not so much different from operator, but it's just different in the way the synth is organized because you don't have those modulating oscillators here. You have some algorithm for the FM synthesis. And if you open wavetable, we already have the basic shapes and we just need the simple sine wave that is just at the bottom. And if you click on modern, you can click on FM, which means that by just increasing the amount, you get FM type effects and you also see how the wavetable actually changes. And we can also change the tuning, which is particularly helpful for our bell sounds, because if we tune it up all the way to 100, we get those overtones that are just way more intense and higher. So it sounds like a bell already. But also it seems a bit static because we don't have some movement that is applied to the amount of FM modulation like we could do with operator. What we can do here is to create some envelope. So for example, envelope three, we just make some very short envelope and apply it on the matrix to the FM amount. And you just have to click on the amount once and then you can apply envelope number three to the amount. and can actually control it and have a little bit of movement and see how much you need. Actually, a little longer is fine. And you can see that wavetable generally tends to sound really direct and definitely more digital. 
But that's also why it inspired me so much to make this kind of Synclavier inspired patch out of it. So as you can see, I used some instrument rack and partial one, because there it's called partials, is the sound I've just shown you. Actually here, what did I do? The envelope is a little shorter, 1.3 seconds. And you can already hear that we get this modulation to those additional sounds, but just in solo. Sounds like the one I've just shown you. And then I just made duplicates. And if you don't know instrument racks yet, I'm going to link you some video here because I just recently also made a video about why this is actually some super amazing tool. And you pan it a little, then you detune it. That's really important. So you can see here two times there's like 11 for the detune and one time it goes up, one time it goes down. Then here it's even more panned out to the sides and detuned even more, plus 17 and minus 17. And this just gives this nice chorusing sound. And you can just change little parameters here. So you see the FM amount is actually at 45, so it's a little different. The frequency is also a little different, but all small things. And the envelope is also different. Again, like with operator, our first sound has the kind of short envelope. Actually, we don't use envelope three here. We just have the envelope uh, number two, which is short. While here, if you look at the matrix, we use envelope three. I don't know why I did three here. Must have had some reasons. And this one is also a bit slower. So like we did with operator, those additional layers just come in a little later. So we have two parts of the sound. And yeah, it's just really simple and fun to duplicate them and detune them a little and have this chorusing effect. Also always watch out for phasing when you do it, but I really enjoy this sound. If you feel like you need some more explanation on how those individual synthesizers in Ableton Live work, I'm going to link you a video here and also a playlist here with all my videos about making sounds with Ableton Live synthesizers. Also, let me know in the comments which of those sounds you like the most or which synthesizer you like using the most. And apart from that, I wish you inspiration with whatever it is that you create and hope to see you soon again at this channel. Bye.